a baby. Kids, what are you talking about? Don't play games with me. No, I don't have them. Don't fool around. Do you have them? They're not here. What's the matter with you? Please don't do this to I'm me. I'm telling you, they're not here. They're not here either. I'll be right over. Hi. Hi. I called Liz. They're not there either. I called everywhere. The window was closed when I put them to bed. Are you sure? Yes. What about their door? Was it locked? Yes. Are you sure? I'm sure. I... What are we going to do? Couple of kids are missing. Those kids. Mrs. Know, Winters. Oh, Mrs. You know, the one with the wig. Pardon me. And the dog and the tight pants. Or the one with all the boyfriends. Uh -huh. You have any leads? Come on, come on, fellas. It's too early. Come on, what do you think? I don't think anything. Oh, come, come on. on. Hey, wait, what's your name? Maggio. Chris, tell me, do you know any of the missing children? I babysit for them. They're nice little kids. I'm worried, too, but I'm sure these guys will be able to find them. They're separated in the middle of a custody suit. You think it's a game? Uh, I think one of them's trying to hide the kids. I don't know. I seen him a few times at the bar down the street. Yeah. He was always alone. I talked to him. You know, nothing much. Mm. Seems like a nice guy. Works for the telephone company. Mm. What about her? 
Well, her, I've, uh, I've seen her around, too, but she's never been alone. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know she was married. Take him, leave the broad to me. Excuse me. Yeah. Lieutenant Kaczynski? Come in. Thank you. When was the last time you saw them, please? Last night. Could you tell me something about what you did with the kids yesterday? Um, yesterday. Please? Uh, well, we went out yesterday. I took them to the park. After dinner, we played. I put them to bed around 9. And, um... Yeah, I, I took Donna to the bathroom at about 12. Mm-hmm. Was the bedroom window open then? No. You sure? I'm sure. Okay. Why do you lock them in their room? Lock them in? I don't lock them in. Was the hook and eye latch last night? Yeah. I put the latch up so Donna won't sneak out of bed at night and raid the icebox. She's beginning to get kind of fat. You think maybe she's uh, hiding the kids on you? Maybe, but uh, no, no, I don't think so. Well, she doesn't seem very upset. Well, that's just her ways. She's plenty upset, I can tell. Okay. So you said you took them out before dinner? I told you I was watching TV and they were playing in their room. Those are my personal things. Just routine. I'm trying to find your kids. Well, they're not in the bag. Kaczynski. You want to come with me, please? Where? Just come. Can't you tell me where? No. She's 
dead. Enough. Enough! Yeah, take her on. Come on. Come on. Do this to you. I don't know. Do you have any enemies you can think of? No. Do you notice anything missing from the kids' room? Only, uh, boys. Blue and red blanket. All right, listen to me. I'm your men friends out and be a girl. Where did you get that? That's mine. Give it to know me. What, I'm doing. what did you do? Go That's through my purse. Easy. No, I said go easy. Me. How come your men friends out and be your girlfriends four to one? Let go of me. It's none of your business. Tell me what you did yesterday. I left work around six. Wait a minute, what is your work? I don't have that down. I model for the Pandora lingerie company. I'm good, too. OK, what did you do when you left? Yes? This is Kaczynski. Who is this? All right, just keep him there a while longer. What did you do? Well, somebody man the phone in there! What did you do when you left work around six? I came home. What did you do when you got home? Gave him dinner. What'd you feed them? Some things I picked up at the deli. Peas, chicken, wait minute, orange, wait minute, wait soda. Wait, 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 wait. When did you go to the deli? You told me that you came straight home afterwards. No, I went to the deli. And then I came home and gave him dinner. When did you go to the park? You said that you went to the park before. We did. When? After dinner. You told me that they played after dinner. When did they play? When we got home. So you did not feed them when you got no, home? No, I was watching TV yes. and they were in when their room. When did you feed them? Uh, 7, 7.30. Which is it, 7 or 7.30? 7.30, and I bathed them. Wait a minute, you just told me that you took them directly to the park after dinner. Oh, Wait a minute, it. after dinner, we went to the park, Thank we you. came home, I bathed them and put them to bed. All right, what time was that? Did I bathe them or put them to bed? Put them to bed. 
What? Eight. Eight. No, I got it in my notes here before you said nine. Which was it? Well, nine. maybe it was 8.30. I don't watch the clock. And when was the last time you saw them? When I took Don into the bathroom around 12. Why the hell do you lock them up in their room? I don't right? lock them up, I told you, Donna. Raise the ice box. Is it possible that you lock them up in their room because you have guys in here? Not the reason. But you do have guys in here. Yes, I do. Well, then what did you do? After you put him to bed. Look, you're wasting time. My baby's dead. What? Why don't you answer my questions when I'm asking them? What the hell does this have to do with my kids? Everything has to do with your kids. <sighs> you don't like me, do you? I'm trying to find out who did this. All right. Yeah, well, get outside and look. Uh, Lou? Can I see you a minute? Yes, sir. What? Well, see you outside a minute, please? Yes, sir. Uh, you excuse this, Mrs. Winters? So how's it going? No good. Well, let me talk to her. Alone. Yes, sir. Well, why don't you uh, have a seat, Doris? Sit down, relax. I know what it's like. I've got a couple kids of my own. They can really get on your nerves. You know, uh, sometimes uh, mothers hurt their children. Why would it. I hurt my kids when I'm fighting for them in court? You want to talk to somebody? Let me get you a priest. No. Listen, uh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to really haul off and belt my kids once in a while. Every, everybody does. And then sometimes some people go too far. I didn't kill Lori. Listen, Doris, you can talk to me. Yeah, yeah. What was this doing in your car? What was it doing in your car? I took it on the picnic yesterday. I thought you said it was missing. It was missing. Well, let's go to the precinct, Mrs. Winters.
tires. Did you find the other little girl? No. Terrible. What that poor woman must be going through. She used to be a nice place to live in. It's a Friday night, Lou, that's all. Shut up! What kind of garbage doesn't care about anything. What's her husband like? You know, if anything ever happened to our kids, I'd kick the hell out of you. Nothing's gonna happen to the kids, Lou. Come on. Let me get you something to eat, huh? You're tired. Don't tell me what I am. Look, Larry, we know that one of you did it. We know that. Why don't you just tell me now? Yeah, I checked with the television station. That uh, movie you said you watched? It was canceled. Oh, yeah, it, the bowling alley. You went. You had uh, You had a couple beers? Yeah, that's what I said, isn't it, Gabe's? Uh-huh. Yeah, well, the bartender said you had gin and tonics, not beers. So, gin and tonic, big deal. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you tell me. The bartender said you never drank hard liquor, but that night you did. He said you were nervous, very nervous. Why don't you just tell us where you really were on Monday night, Larry? At Doris's. I was in the basement. I, I bugged her phone. What? It's easy, you should know. I was listening to her. She was talking to Duval. Who? Uh, just some guy, Duval, Mel Duval. Made a lot of money in the siding business. She's with him a lot. Well, uh, what did they talk about? Nothing much. The custody suit. She was scared that I'd... I'd get the kids. She knew I had plenty of them. What'd she say she was going to do? She didn't say nothing. How long have uh, you been doing this? Since we split up. First, I used to sit in my car and watch her window. Then I bugged her phone. Used to listen for hours. But that wasn't enough, you know? I mean, I, I really had to know what was going on. So I bugged her apartment, in her bedroom. And then you uh, killed the kids just to get even with her, right? No. Hmm? No, I couldn't hurt my kids. me to see what you got. You got 75 cases of problems? Oh, don't give me any Come on, powder. Vic, you just didn't drop in. We just got started and already you're on our backs. I asked you, what do you want? We're getting phone calls. Lots of press. And everybody's getting real scared, especially the mayor. So I want you guys to clean it up real fast. You understand? Can you give me an estimated time of death, please? It's hard to tell. There's enough food left in the stomach to make it hard to determine. The mother said she fed the kid around 7.30 and saw the kid last at midnight. Now, is that possible? It's possible. I would say that child died sometime between 11 p.m. and uh, 3 a.m. You can't be more definite than that? But the digestive process takes five hours. If the child was fed at 7.30 and died after midnight, it is likely that the stomach contained a small amount of food. And what did you find, a lot or a little? It's 
not that simple. Excuse me. Look, Doc, this kid was murdered. The mother was a prime suspect. She said that she saw the kid around midnight. If the kid died before midnight, then the mother is obviously lying, yes? You want to help me out a little here, I please? I can't be more precise. It's not a very exact science. It's better to be concerned. But it is possible that the kid died around midnight, even before midnight. everything I... that I know for the moment. Thanks for your help, Doc. Nothing at all. Mrs. Winters, I'm Officer Starrett. What are you doing here? I've been assigned to protect you. I don't need protection. I want you to get Mrs. out of here. Mrs. No, Mrs. out! You are on top! I don't want you here! Doris, I would have come yesterday, but I wasn't sure if, you, if you'd want me. Oh, Mommy! Have they found Donna yet? I did oh, my it. Baby. No, I need no mommy. Okay. Baby. Baby. Come on, sit down. <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> trying to talk to you for two days. I used to go out with Doris Winters. I know her real well. So? So I just don't think she could have killed her kids. No, you don't, do you? Good. Listen, man, I just think maybe I could find out. Not she might so. talk to me. We know you know her. with him? Relations? Is that important? Yeah. When was the last time? What? You, you, you saw him. Inspector just asked you when was the last time you saw the guy. Last March. Cy Rampling? Girl's doctor. Their pediatrician? That's right. Uh, did you, uh, with him too? Yes, I did. H how? H Harold Rowe. What? R O W E. A friend from work. Mrs. Winters. Oh, look, I made it with a lot of guys. Now, none of them took my kids, and none of them killed Lori. Why don't you find out who did it instead of getting your kicks from my sex life? <clears throat> who was Ken Carley? My uncle.
It's like I told those other fellas. I was coming around here. When I reached that point right there, I saw the little foot sticking out of the hole. All right, take it easy. How do you figure these kind of things? Hello? No, this isn't Doris Winters. Reap. It's another neighborhood crank. You ought to get your phone number changed. Hey, 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 wait a minute. Who are you? Where is she? Lying down. Who are you? I'm Liz Carson. I live across the hall, and I happen Go to get be... Her. Come on. And tell them not to get herself all dolled up. Donna, in a ditch. She's dead. Doris. 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 Oremus. Omnipotens, sempiterna ne Deus. Sancte puritatis amator. Qui animas huius parvularum acelorum regnum hodie misericordia vocare dignatus es. Dignatus etiam, Domine, ita nobiscum misericorditer agere, ut meritis tue santissime passionis, et intercessione beate Mariae semper virginis, et omnium sanctorum tuorum, in eodem regno nos cum omnibus sanctis relectis tuis semper facias congaudere, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Amen. Recream eterna dona eis domine, et lux perpetua luciat eis. Requiescant in pace. Amen. Anime e arum, et anime omnium fidelium defunctorum, per misericordiam. Columbus PD. They uh, picked up a guy in a playground there. He was bothering little girls. He's, he's from here. He says he killed the Winters kids. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's the third guy in two weeks says he did it. Yeah, I know that, but I think we should check it out. Well, not me, not today. I think we should go hey! out there, Lou. You want to do it? You want to waste your time? Go ahead. Not me, I said. I know who did it. She's not in Columbus. baby. How you doing, babe? Okay. <laughs> Come on, sit down. A real bummer, huh? I 
I gotta keep busy. Keep my mind off it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hey, I got some big buyers coming this afternoon. You can model the new line for us. But, Dari, honey, if it's too much, you just tell me, okay? I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. What are you, sweetheart, 34C? B. Uh, of course. I'll get Vivian to fix you up. You've got the perfect body for us. Thanks, man. Hey, why don't you join us later for a drink? Okay. And Friday, I'm giving the buyers a going-away party at their hotel? Friday? Yeah. Well, that'd be nice. All right. Be Beautiful. Nice. All right, take care. Thanks. All right, honey. I still say that maybe, just maybe it could have been Larry. I told you before, the guy's pathetic. I mean, why, he's crazy enough. I mean, we're spying on him. I suppose he's trying to get even. Anybody uses guys the way she uses guys and doesn't even care who the hell knows about it. Trash. A broad like this doesn't deserve to live. She corrupts everybody she touches. Hey. Hey. Hey, Deval. How you doing? Sit down, Deval. Yeah, sorry I'm late. Hi, Mel. What do you have? Hello, Cal. Usual, babe? Uh, no thanks, Duval. I, uh, had a late breakfast. How's your business, Duval? The business is, uh, bad. Mm -hmm. Seen your girlfriend lately? I told you. I get a call from her every once in a while. I know you told me. Why don't you tell me again what she likes? Hmm? She's... She's the type of broad who lights up a place. The kind, the kind who knows how to make a man feel great like a million dollars. And in bed, she does things my wife would never do. You know, but it's funny. We've been going together, what, two years? I've never seen her nude. And when it's over, it's like a, a peck on the cheek and so long, Charlie, like we've been watching TV or something. But when we're making it, <laughs> she's special, OK? Let me ask you a question, Mel. Huh? Yeah, go ahead. You got a wife and five kids, right? Look at the yeah, way they're terrific. Look at the work. Yeah. So why are you messing around with a dame like Doris? I can't help it. I've always needed other dames, you know? Doris is different. I'm crazy about her. But could she have killed her kids? Are you kidding? She loved those kids. And I know she did. And she never hurt no one. Never. You want to get in or are you going to make a scene? Come on. Come on. Hey, you say you bought gas at 3 o'clock. Well, the gas station attendants say you came in at 5. Yeah, he's wrong. But they were both wrong? Yeah, I got gas at 3. You didn't buy gas at 3, and you did not buy gas at 5. You told me that you did not leave work until 6. That's right. I took a break, and I got gas at 3. What did you feed the kids for dinner? Check your stupid I asked notes. you what you fed the kids for dinner. Chicken. It was chicken. The delicatessen owner said it was ravioli. Ravioli. Well, it was chicken. My memory is good, good as his, better. I know what I fed my kids, and it was chicken. Uh, excuse me, the autopsy report shows traces of, uh, uh, shows traces of pasta, not chicken. Yeah, yeah, so, so, big deal. I don't care what the test shows. I know what I gave my kids for dinner. At what time did you feed them? 7.30. And, uh, what time did you last see them? Around 12. Lori's stomach was almost full. It takes five hours to digest food. So either you fed them way after 
Or you never saw those children at midnight. Or maybe someone else fed them later. I don't think so. Where are we going now? Don't worry, Mrs. Winters. We just have a few more questions. Did you tell Larry that you'd never allow him to have the children? So? Did you tell him that? Yeah, I told him. Where were you at 2 a.m.? When? The last night you saw the kids. At home. No, you weren't. Mel DeVell called you. Nobody answered. There was nobody home. I was at home. I didn't feel like answering the phone. too many discrepancies. I didn't kill my girls. I don't think you did it alone. Who was it helped you, Doris? I didn't do it alone or with anybody else. You're lying. You've lied about 25 different things. Your kids were in the way of your stinking, slutty life. So you got rid of them. You killed them. drinks you feel better. Um, can we get out of here? Um, you want to go to my place? Uh, I can't, baby. I got a meeting at City Hall. Well, you've got friends there. They could help. Uh, 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 I don't know, baby. That's kind of risky. A 
Mrs. Winters. As your attorney, I'm relying on your word that everything you've told me is the truth. I'll speak with the police. I'll try to get them to stop annoying you. But you've got to help, too. How? Look, Mrs. Winters, Bill Carmines is an old friend, and I'll do everything I can. But I mean, there's no point in my being your attorney if I can't be blunt. You're an attractive woman. Your style is uh, flashy. What do you mean, my style? You're the mother of two dead children, don't you see? You're not acting the way people expect a grieving mother to act. How do they expect me to act? You've got to tone down, dress more acceptably, demurely. Cooperate, try to create some sympathy for I yourself. don't want sympathy. I want to be left alone. You're not going to be left alone. You're in the papers every day. They make you seem like a whore who doesn't give a damn. What I do in private is my business. I'm not ashamed, and I'm not changing for anybody. Would just be until you're out of the public eye? No. Look, she was just out of high school when she got married. I mean, Larry was the first guy she ever slept with. Believe me, she didn't know anything. Except after Donna, she knew she did not want to have any more kids. But Donna wouldn't even let her use a diaphragm, and uh, along came Lori. Uh, I don't know, things were just really lousy for her. She was uh, stuck at home, alone, with two kids. And when he wasn't working, all they did was fight. She finally threw him out, and she started horsing around. She found out that uh, being attractive could get her places. Nice places. Now, restaurants that Larry could never afford. And people she'd never meet otherwise. Classy people. Yeah. Like Mel Duval, the classy guy. <laughs> yeah, like Mel Duval. And like Carmine's. Hey, he hangs out with all the big shots. She has even been to parties with the mayor. So why should she sit and rot? She should have thought all that before she got married and had kids. She didn't kill those kids. They weren't in her way. She was doing everything she wanted to do. <clears throat> she's always had looks. And now she's smart. Oh, yeah. She's a survivor. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Look, you told me before you were the one who introduced her to Mel Duval. Tell me more about that. How'd she meet him? Uh, Doris and I were living together, and, um... Oh, yeah? Oh, that's nice. Go ahead. I, uh... I knew that Mel liked her, even though he was dating me. Oh, that's cozy. Do, uh, the three of you go out together? What do you mean by that? Oh, Lizzie. You know what I mean. Come on. Oh, uh, were we making it together? Is that what you mean? I guess you just really don't know much about women being friends, do you, Lieutenant? Or even much about women. I know about women, like Doris Winters. Lyndon Johnson. <laughs> hey, I thought we were gonna have some laughs. Huh? Cops came in to see me. Yeah, what they want? <laughs> Same old thing. What'd you say? I said you were mean, nasty, terrible, and bad. <laughs> <laughs> what I should have said is, hey, don't ask me. 
Because I hardly ever see her. So what's been going on? Well, you know, that it was a custody suit. And the kids. I'm just trying to get back together, that's all. It's Bill Carmine's, huh? Look, do you want to talk about him or do you want to have some fun? Because if you don't want to have fun, I'm just going to go. Okay, all right, baby. We're going to have some fun. Hey, I just missed you, that's all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She knows we're bugging her. Sounds like she's dedicating this one to us. Hello? This is Larry. Yeah, this is Larry. I want you to know Mel DeVal is with your wife right now. Who is this? This is a friend of yours. Wait a minute, who is this? Why don't you just get the hell over there? What are you looking at? He was here, wasn't he? I know he was here. Look, even if he was, it's, it's got nothing to do with you. Well, we're still married, Doris. Well, we haven't been married for four years, and so not really. Well, it's not too late. Look, look, 
It's over. It's just no good. We need each other now, Doris. I'm with the cops hassling us. Ah, oh, cops can go to hell. They got nothing. I think everybody in the department's nuts. Tom, it's 4.30. Everybody's trying to get something on her. But the papers say she's as much as a papers. confessed tramp. She's a sitting duck for the papers. What if it's some nut? What if he does it again? And we're not even looking for anybody else anymore. I think you're feeling sorry for her. But look at her. She's got no shame. All of those men. A woman like that is capable of anything. I don't think so. Tom, come on to bed. Hmm? What kind of a city is this when I'm afraid to let my children play outdoors? Why isn't that woman behind bars? She's a menace. She doesn't deserve to live. Why haven't you done anything? Now, the rest are worse. I've gotten over 5,000 letters since those kids were killed. Now, what's going on? We're doing everything we can. You haven't got anything. We? Why the hell haven't you nailed him? Or him. What do you mean? He still thinks she didn't do it. He's been chasing peeping Toms in Columbus, Dayton. Come on. Ashtabula. She could have done it, but so could Larry. I didn't bring you here to listen to you fight. These people are angry and scared. They're demanding justice. Now I want you to get them off my back. Find the killer. Yes, sir. I think Doris Winters did it. Or else it was some kind of nut. We don't have any nuts here, do we? Well, Larry's a nut. He's crouched down in some basement listening to his wife in bed with other guys. That's a nut. I think Larry could have done it. I think you like the broad, you know. I think she turns you on, sweetheart. I think you want to make out with her, too. You're just too scared to admit it. What'd you say to me? You yeah. heard me. I, I can't heard hear you. Me. I can't you hear you. You want to make, you make her, too. You just the woman's a whore, you moron. Yeah, that's what makes her interesting, isn't it? She's different. Come on, Lou, top, Lou, top, top. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Let's yes, go. Let's go. sir. Let's go. Why are you doing this to Honey, me? it's bad for business. But I can't I help it. I haven't done anything. I know that, and you know that. But the newspapers, well, they, they call you a lingerie model, like that's dirty yeah, or something. Yeah, but it's me they're talking about, not, not that company. Uh, Doris, honey, that's not the point. Look, look, here. Mrs. Winters, a model for the Pandora Lingerie Company. Pandora Lingerie Company, again, I can't take any more of it, no. honey. My sales are going to oh, suffer. Oh, Norm, don't do this to me. Uh, uh, honey, look, look, look. Well, look, when, when, I'll welcome you back with open arms, babe, when this mess blows over. All right. Blows over. My babies are dead. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry, Doris. I got a business to run. If they want you to take a lie detector test, you take it. No. Nothing to lose. Larry took it. Larry, that's the first test he ever passed. But your refusal to take it only makes you look guilty. Don't you see? All right, I'll do it. Only if there are no cops hanging around. I'll see that it's arranged. OK, Mrs. Winters, as I explained to you, these won't hurt you. These are sensors that are just going to pick up responses from your body. Can I smoke? Uh, not right now. A little dance? A little... I'm just, just joking. I know you are. OK, Mrs. Winters, we're ready. Is your name Doris Winters? Yes. Do you live at 120 Bayview Apartments? Yes. 
Do you intend to answer my questions truthfully? Yes. Do you have a profession? What's behind that thing? Oh, there's nothing there. Are you sure? Yes, absolutely. Do you have a profession? Yes. Are you a model? There is someone back there watching me. They no, no, like no, to no, me. No, 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 They like to me. You get Mrs. me out Winters, of here. Mrs. please sit down. Get Mrs. Winters, these please. things off. No, they Mrs. promised me. Now, please me. sit. Mrs. They Winters, please sit down. They promised me. I want it white. I want it platinum. White. I want to look chic. Hello? Police officers? You Miriam Hamlish? Miriam Hamlish? Oh, I'm hard of hearing. We're looking for Miriam Hamlish. I'm Miriam Hamlish. How you doing there? Kaczynski? Wharton? Police officers? Did you write this? Yes. Why'd you wait so long? I was scared to tell what I knew. Well, why now? I guess my conscience was bothering me. I right, get dressed and come with us, cool. The woman is an eyewitness. She said she saw them take the kids out of the house. Now, what the hell more do you need? I need a qualified witness to walk in. Well, what is this woman? We... we were talking to her yesterday. Yeah, we know. Know. Oh, All office. she said was she saw Doris Winters with some guy. Now, this Doris Winters dame had a kid by one hand and had a bundle under the other arm. Now, we don't know who the guy is, who the kid is, or what was in the bundle. Excuse me for yelling. Do you have enough for an indictment? I don't know. All right, look. <clears throat> this is a broad with a hundred different guys. So in a fit of anger, she kills Laurie. She's got to get one of her boyfriends to help her get rid of the body. Then they have to kill the other kid. You got enough now? Huh? <laughs> So what is this, Kaczynski's theory on the Winters case? Is that what I'm supposed to say in court? Yeah. Yeah. All right, just a second. Dr. Rosen is here. Oh, good. She's been very helpful. Send her in. Yeah. Behave yourself, Kaczynski. You got it. Come in, Dr. Rosen, please. Thank you. Doctor, we'd like to talk to you about the Winters case, particularly the time of death of the two children. Gentlemen, I'm very busy. I've already given you my report. The one child was so badly decomposed, I could hardly tell anything, and the other child died approximately between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Yes, Doctor, we have your report. It seems to me that it's conjecture. At best, an educated guess, wouldn't you say? Based on 25 years of experience, yes. Yeah, we know that, Doctor. But we also know that there are members of your own staff who disagree with those findings and are so willing to testify in court that the kid died well before midnight. Dr. Rosen, would we'd you, like to... Would you please repeat that again, please? Dr. Rosen, we would like to show that Doris Winters lied when she said that she saw her two children alive at midnight. Gentlemen, I know what you want from me. 
It does not change my opinion. Laurie Winters could have died, unfortunately, between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Dr. Rosen, all we're asking is that you review the evidence again. Or your staff will be summoned to testify. <clears throat> you would like me to re-examine the case with my staff, is that it? Yes, doctor. Mistake is always a possibility. Oh, yes. I, uh, I shall get back to you, gentlemen. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much, Doctor. Bye. All right, stay after her, Kaczynski. She's never gonna let her flunkies testify. She'll come around. Yes, sir. Let me see a show of hands who's for the indictment. What is it, Tom? Well, you heard Rosen. She's not sure the kid died before midnight. And I don't believe this uh, Hamlish broad. And where the hell was she all the time, anyway? Uh, suddenly she appears, and she said she saw the whole thing. That nutty dame. Don't change anything for me. You're outvoted, Tom. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me. You know, uh, now that we're going on, you should be moving on to something else anyway. What? You kicking me off the case? Well, that's not it at all, Tom. I just can't afford to have my whole staff tied up on this thing forever. And now we have our lady. She was the best model I ever had. Uh, employed. <laughs> did she ever entertain your out-of-town buyers? What do you mean, entertain? I mean, did she entertain them after five? Objection, Your Honor. I see no relevance. On the contrary, Your Honor, the state will prove a direct tie between the personal life of Doris Winters and the death of her children. Overruled. Yeah, sure I know. She came in often. Did you see her when you weren't working? Yeah. How many times? I don't know, a lot. More than 50 times? No, not that much. 30 times? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say about 30. Did you see her at her place or yours? Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Dr. Roy. How many times did you have relations with Doris Winters? Three, four, I don't remember. Did she show any remorse, Mr. Pennington? Objection, Your Honor, please. Objection sustained. Strike it from the record. I haven't got a chance. Too early to tell. They think I did it. Purple Every guy on that jury. Dressed in a jewelry. clinging purple dress and wearing the heavy makeup yeah. that has become her me. trademark, sat demurely in the courtroom while the prosecution trotted out lover after lover. They've got no hard evidence, Doris. It's purely character assassination, which is why I'm asking you again to get your hair toned down. To wear something simple. This is as simple as it gets. What's the point in our defending you if you won't take advice? You're not due here till tomorrow, man. Yeah. I'll handle this, Inspector. Why haven't you answered my calls? I can't talk. Why are you ditching me? I'm not ditching you. Uh, we'll be back in a while. Now, you'll be here tomorrow, Mel, to go over testimony. Uh, yeah. We need you. I said, yeah. It's just that I can't see it during the trial. It's fine, but after the trial, you're gonna promise me we'll be like before, okay? What do you mean? Just promise, promise me, that's all. But promise you what? 
I want to marry you. I want you to have my children. That's marry right. you? Oh, baby, I need you. I... Mel, I like you. I like talking to you. I like sleeping with you. But marriage, I mean, that'd be the same old trap, and I don't ever want it again. No, it would be different with us. No, it wouldn't. Look at you. I'll straighten out. I'm gonna stop drinking. My business will pick up. It'll be beautiful. It won't work. I left the stone and the kids for you. You didn't do it for me. You're really a bitch, huh? What's the matter? You forgotten how good we are together? Not now. You forgot, huh? Uh, yeah, the screen was off the window, and the window was part way open, but there was a dresser up against the windowsill, and on a closer examination, it revealed that there was a thin film of dust on both the dresser and the windowsill itself. And what conclusion did you draw from this? Well, that the children couldn't have gotten out of that window or been abducted through that window, that however they got out, it was through the door. The same door that Doris Winters said that she had latched? Yes, sir. Your witness. Now, how is it, Detective Tarcher, that there's no mention in the police report of this film of dust on the dresser or the sill? I don't know that, sir. Did you make a note of it? Oh, yes, sir, I did. Do you have your notes with you? No, sir, they were lost. Now, Detective Tarcher, there is nothing in the record of a fact of dust on the sill or the bureau, you cannot produce any of the notes you took that day, and yet you expect us to believe your I testimony. I remember everything that happened that morning. She came out there with the makeup all on and her hair all done up. You know, she never even cried. Your Honor, I ask that the jury be instructed to disregard those last remarks. The jury will disregard the witness's last remark and have it stricken from the record, please. How did you find out that she was having these other relationships? How did I know? Yes. She admitted to having had affairs with over 50 different men. And this was while she was still married? Yes, sir. Didn't seem to matter. She even seemed proud of it. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Did you ever give Doris Winters a chance to clear herself? Yes, sir, many times. I personally offered her a chance to take sodium pentothal to prove her innocence. Now, you're talking about truth serum. Yes, sir. And what did she say? She said that she wouldn't do it, that she didn't have to prove her innocence, that she wouldn't give me the personal satisfaction. She didn't do anything to help us. Objection, Your Honor. At the time under consideration, the defendant was not even under indictment. Now, she certainly could not be expected to take truth serum. Your Honor, the defendant did not try to help at all. There'll be no more outbursts like that, Mr. Varel. And the objection is sustained. Strike the remark from the record, please. Thank you, Your Honor. You've got no case. If you don't come up with more than what you've shown so far, I'm going to have to throw it out as a matter of law. Your Honor, I know I have a case. Not on what you've shown. So she sleeps around. There's not one bit of evidence that she killed her children. He wants evidence. We'll give him evidence. Whose fault it is, Mel? It's Doris's fault. You know that. She used you, Mel. 
Melvin, the one thing I can't understand is why the hell are you protecting her? She killed her kids. No, no. Yes. No. She's the only one who could have done it. She had to get rid of them so she could play around with guys like Carmine's. Guys who were making more than you, who had better connections than you. He's right, Mel. She threw you over, Mel. For what? Some kind of bum like Carmine's. Yeah, but the one good thing, your business is in terrific shape. Melvin. We want to know about Doris Winters. And what are you protecting her for, huh? I'm not even talking. I'm not easy, protecting easy, anybody. Easy. Melvin, look at you, will you please? Your hands are shaking, you're a wreck. Here, have a drink. I'm okay. You're okay, huh? Your marriage is shot, you're a drunk. Why don't you do yourself a favor, sweetheart? Help us out. Come on. Dr. Rosen. When you examined the child's body, did you find that the stomach was full? Yes, uh, the stomach contained a, uh, a large amount of food, yes. And how soon after the child was fed did it die? <laughs> it's a very difficult question to answer with um, any precision. Must be some leeway. Dr. Rosen, Doris Winters told the police that she fed her children around seven. Did you know that? Well, if you tell me so. Then is it possible that she saw her children again around midnight? Dr. Rosen, is it possible that she... Please, please, don't shout. I can hear you. Please, forgive me. From the amount of food in the stomach, I could place the time of death before midnight. No, that is impossible. I saw Winters, them at midnight. I know it. You Mrs. come into the bathroom. They were alive Mrs. then. Winters, ladies and gentlemen, if you please. I saw them at midnight. Mrs. Winters, I'll have order. Dr. Rosen had hardly finished her testimony when Mrs. Winters was on her feet screaming that she had seen the children at midnight. The courtroom once again erupted as Judge Williams tried vainly to maintain control. Weather and more news after this. They got to Rosen. <laughs> Maybe they found something new. Uh, I heard her say the time of death couldn't be determined. It was between 11 and 3. They finally got to her. Better stay out of the Tom. I know she's lying. There's nothing you can do. But she's lying. It was hotter than hell in the apartment that night. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. Hotter than Hades. <laughs> so I got up. I remember it was 2 a.m. because I looked at the clock. I was worried I'd be tired at work. So I went into the kitchen and I made some hot tea. You know, it's better to drink something warm when you're hot. <laughs> so then I went over to the window to get the breeze. Please, Mrs. Hamlish, just tell us what happened. Well, I was leaning out of the window as far as I could when something off to the right caught my attention. There were these people coming at me. 
Well, not at me. I'm on the second floor. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Looked like a family. There was a man walking in front. And a woman come up behind, carrying a bundle under one arm. And holding the hand of a little girl with the other. And there was a dog running around, sniffing. This bundle, which arm was this bundle under? Left. I didn't know what the bundle was. Then they got to a car. He opened the door. And he took the bundle from her. And then he threw it in. And then she ran over to him and she said, oh, my God, don't do that to her. And he looked at her and he said, now you're sorry. She looked at him and said, please don't say that. Then the little girl got in the back seat of the car. She had to climb over the bundle. I started to feel sick. I I'm sorry, numb. Mrs. Hamley. It was like... Please stick to the facts. Your feelings aren't relevant here. Did you try to do anything, Miss Hamlish? You kidding? I tried to crank the window shut, but it squeaked. And then she said, we've been seen. And so I ducked behind the curtain. And then he said, let's get going. And then they got in the car and they drove off down Holmby Street. And what did you do? I sat down on my green lounger and lit a cigarette. I thought about waking my mother. But she's hard of hearing anyway. This woman that you say you saw carrying a bundle under her arm, and this woman that you heard say, don't touch her like that, and this woman that you heard say, we've been seen. Do you see that woman in this courtroom? That's the woman. No, Miriam. Will you be taking the stand no, in your own no. defense? Are you still no, saying wait, all wait, wait a minute. Uh, all right. I, I, I only have please? one thing to say. I, I want to ask anyone who might have been on the mall where I live in Bayview the night my children were taken to please come forward. Nothing will happen to you, I promise. I need help. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Please state your name and be seated. Melvin Duval. Mr. Duval, how long have you known Doris Winters? Three years, a friend fixed us up. And during that period, would you consider yourself an intimate friend? Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Yes. And, of course, you knew about the custody hearing for her two children. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Yes, I did. Did you discuss her two children? Sure. What was her attitude? Well, last year, we was at the Lake Breeze Motel. Please speak up, Mr. Duvall. We was at the Lake Breeze Motel. We had been in the room about 10 minutes. We had a couple of drinks. Objection, Your Honor. I failed to see the relevance of this entire line of questioning. Overruled. Please go on, Mr. Duvall. 
She just kept on crying, you know. She said over and over again, they will understand. They know it was for the best. And she looked at me and said, Melvin, please forgive me. I killed them. Defendant, please rise. Have you reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Please state your verdict. We find the defendant guilty of manslaughter in the first degree. Congratulations, Lou. You finally got her. You feel safer now that she's behind bars? You didn't have one piece of hard evidence. Just her black book. And the way she lived her life. Why don't you go tell it to the judge?
is one of the most unforgettable stories in American history. On the morning of January 17, 1977, convicted murderer Gary Gilmore was sentenced to be shot to death. Having been found guilty of the crime of criminal homicide, murder in the first For Gary, degree, it was the end of a journey which began the day he got out of jail. Mama! Shake it! You can't have it all in five minutes, Gary. You have to earn it, bit by bit. You have to make it the right good stuff in you. <laughs> Don't you dare mess up. For a time, it even seemed it might work, both for Gary Gilmore and Nicole Baker, the new girl in his life. I don't want to just jump in bed with you. I want to make love to you. And if you I feel like I'm in the right place for the first time. <laughs> you come in here with this welfare witch who's living on the government forever. I love her. All right, Gary. While two women fought for his love, Gary fought his own anger. You want to fight? Get out back. Gary's dangerous. He needs help. Jimmy, stop! Jim! I'll never hit you again, sweetie. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want to die? You're going to kill us all! Pull over! And after the anger came the violence. I gave Nicole this real sweet little over and under Derringer to protect herself. Too bad, partner. And after the violence, came the killings. This one's for me. Oh, what kind of an idiot would do that? This one's for Nicole. Gary did it. Gary, you commit a murder on Monday. You commit a murder on Tuesday. I wasn't about to wait till Wednesday rolled around. And the events that led to the execution of the century. What would you say if I told you I deserve to die? I don't want to ask myself whether your death will be more profitable to me than your life. I prefer to be shot. Gary! Gary Gilmore, I love you! Gary Gilmore. I love you. His crimes were unforgivable. His story is unforgettable. Who's gonna play me in the movie? Tommy Lee Jones plays Gary Gilmore. The Executioner's Song, based on the number one bestseller by Norman Mailer. Frank was a good neighbor. How's it going, Ray? Okay, Frank, how are you? A loving husband and father. Mm. Good thing I married you for your mind. Is that what it was? Well. A valued worker. Yeah, but will they buy it? You're up against some real heavyweights. Thanks, kid. You're a terrific salesman. When last seen, Sharon was wearing a blue and gold uniform and blue and white sneakers. Police are now investigating any link between this disappearance... That's the girl I bought cookies from this morning. It could be anybody from the ice cream man to the archbishop. I want an ID on this guy pronto. Is this our boy? He's somebody's boy. But he found himself suspected of being a brutal killer and hounded by the press. Well, I know they haven't formally charged him yet. My guess is they're waiting for the body to turn up. I mean, first you accused my husband of murder, and now you want to let me see him. Frank skipped lunch yesterday. That's all I know. But do you seriously think that if I was going to kidnap a child, I would do so right in front of my own office? If I had all the answers, Mr. Stapleton, I'd be the highest paid policeman in the world. What would you do if, if they told you they were holding someone for those crimes? Just sit there? Mike Farrell. I get my facts straight for openers. Terry Garr. Veronica Cartwright, Lane Smith of V, and Charles Aidman in Prime Suspect. Never know what's gonna happen. Yes, I can't stand it. I can't stand you. Then why did you leave? Because I love you. John and Greta Ryda have never had a storybook marriage. Young parents, desperate and on the edge of poverty. She was insecure and afraid of a man she loved. He had a passionate and violent temper that one day exploded. He beat me and raped me. I'm scared he's going to kill me. Did you rape Greg? <sighs> no. The true story made national headlines. You're under arrest for rape in the first degree. If he'd said he was sorry or something, but he didn't. He said, I deserve it. Mickey Rourke, 
Linda Hamilton. Rape and Marriage, the Rideout Case. Ed Asner. They've got millions to spend. Even if you win, you might well win nothing. Daniel J. Travanti. You've been hoping to prove that these statements about Corcoran were produced carelessly, for carelessness about another man's reputation amounts to malice, and malice is an important factor in a case of this kind, isn't it? The malice is in the man. Asner, Travanti, two of television's most acclaimed stars. In a powerful drama based on Louis Neiser's best-selling autobiography, A Case of Libel.